Today's podcast is being brought to you by the GSD Retreat. So the GSD Retreat is for badass business owners who want to get shit done beachside in Cabo, Mexico on December 2nd through 6th. This is an annual business strategy and content planning retreat. So I want to invite you guys to come and join me and several other amazing speakers in a spectacular oceanfront bedroom villa for an intimate business retreat where you will experience not only fun and friendship, but we want to get shit done for 2019. And so I want to ask you, do you actually block time on your calendar to work on your business to plan for consistent content and for consistent marketing each month? But you know, something always comes up. So again, I want you to invite you to come to spend three full days with me collaborating with like-minded business individuals looking to get this done to knock it out. I will show you exactly how to put together an annual plan with content creation, images, weekly schedule, and so much more. You will leave Cabo with a solid plan to crush 2019. So if you're interested, I want to invite you to visit BIT dot ly slash gsd retreat again it's december 2nd through 6th in cabo mexico sign up today seating is limited we only have a certain amount of rooms so it is limited if you want to start 2019 with a plan and a bang and you don't have to worry about a marketing strategy, come spend three days with me in Cabo where you will leave with an amazing, amazing plan where you can fast track your personal and professional goals, leaving you with the return on investment of being absolutely priceless. So visit bit.ly slash GSD retreat. Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Prophet. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the industry and share with you what we have learned from them and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Before we get started, I want to ask you something. Are you looking for a community of professionals that are looking to share, learn, and grow where you can talk openly and freely about the highs and lows in your business? If so, I want to invite you to check out my inner circle at AngelaProfit.com slash membership. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Prophet. Thank you so much for tuning in today on Weddings Unveiled. Today, I am super excited to talk with Carl Clementson. Carl has founded Hometown Elegance Event Catering and Productions. And Carl is not only the founder, he's the senior event producer for the company. Welcome, Carl. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you so much for taking time out of your crazy busy schedule to join us and share a little bit about your company. Let's jump in and tell our audience how like what's your background well, my background started in it kind of plays into how i got into the industry but my background it comes from restaurants i started out just working in restaurants going through college to get a degree in advertising and during the process of all that i volunteered to cover for a catering manager who's going on maternity leave and when she came back we had changed the catering division for the restaurant and she said that's yours now and so i took it and really ran with it. And so my background started there. And once I got into doing weddings, I was like, this is where I need to be. That's awesome. So it wasn't really anything that was planned. It was, it sounds like you were stepped in and then you saw an opportunity and you took it and ran with it. Pretty much. The the vision I took over represented 0.02% of store sales and in 14 months went to 2.2% of store sales on a $2 million annual sales 
sales projection every year. So we went 14 months to the, from 0 0.02 to two and a half. That's amazing. That's amazing. It was crazy. How'd you get into like weddings and events? Like obviously starting in restaurants gives you a little bit of taste, but as you and I both know, weddings and events and then running a restaurant is like a hundred and well, just so different, like 180 degrees different. So how'd you get into the, the wedding and the event space? Well, I got into that because catering naturally led into that. And when I got into it, I realized that we were not doing things right. So I, first thing I did was went and sought organizations or individuals that had more experience because literally I took it over just as a favor and had no plans of getting into it. And so I finding different magazines and or you know industry organizations and my eyes suddenly opened to this could be done better, way better. And so that's how we accelerated the growth in that vision. And then when I, I did a transfer to where I'm currently located on the other side of the state, I was commissioned to do what I had done out in my previous position here. And the locals said, oh, let's not do that. We don't want to change it. And the pent up creative juices from knowing what the industry was demanding of us as professionals was too much just to contain. So I started a hobby and a year after the hobby started, I went full time with it. And so that led me to saying, all right, there's nobody doing full service catering, really uh, true offsite. We're all, they're all restaurants. So let's do this and do it well. And my saying in life is do it once, do it right, do it excellent. And that's that. how, how I approach everything. So today, Home 10 Elegance is the only offsite catering company in the region. It's the only company capable of cooking an entire meal on site. And that approach led us into other things. We are local vendors, and I use vendors, not creative partners, because they're mostly all vendors. There's a distinction between the two in, in, in our world. And they weren't keeping up with the pace that we were going. So we, we slowly integrated. And doing linens, we contracted some of the, one of the big names in, in the industry for linens. I believe you use them. And we're the first ones to off, offer anything besides black, white, and ivory for table linens. Wow. And, uh, moved into high top tables and tables and chairs and then into drapery because nobody had enough drapery to do the space that we needed. And then it moved into doing florals because the florist wouldn't deliver to the client. So the clients were having to stress about handling all that. And I was like, we have the coolers, we have the capacity, we have the talent. Let's, let's do it and just take that off their plate. And that's how we got into the tents as well. That's awesome. And it, it's just grown to fill the need where people have not kept pace with the standards that we demand of ourselves. I love that. It's like you see an opportunity and you know you can do it well, especially when no one's doing it, <laughs> and then jump on it. So for those listeners out there who normally like don't understand like the difference or they're newer, that it is not normal for a restaurant to like go off site and cater. Like, can you talk a little bit about the back end of the business side of just educating people on just because you own a restaurant and you do it really, really well, doesn't mean you're going to go do off site catering and know what the hell you're doing. So can you talk a little bit about that? Well, the difference for us is in how the food is handled and approached from beginning to end. The restaurants typically use whoever is available. They typically don't have dedicated staff that are trained to do offsite. They're just let's grab the busboy, the dishwasher, and the server that's standing around, and you're out. You're the caterers now. Throw on a shirt, wipe off the the dish room, and you're out the door. And that's what we see here. And when you handle food in that kind of process, where nobody's dedicated to what's the final product, it's just get it out the door which is basically a cash flow model. Most restaurants do it simply for the cash. It changes how the end product for the client across the board. I mean, filet mignon, you, yeah, you can do it in the restaurant, great. But the moment you pack it and haul it 20 minutes down the road, get set up, which is another 20 minutes, serve, you're in an hour. And a filet mignon sitting around for an hour is not the same as if it come off the grill right away. No, not at all. <laughs> That's how we've how we've done it. We've we figured out how to do things excellent on site. And it's completely different in 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 the end product. It's restaurant an off site caterer is a restaurant quality anywhere in the middle of nowhere. Whereas a restaurant is restaurant quality in the restaurant and delivery 
when you need it. So from a logistical perspective, do you all prefer to work at venues where they have all of like the hot boxes in the oven or do you guys ha- bring all that equipment? Let's if you'll just tell our listeners like what are things that they need to look for to make sure that you're successful in creating that quality product on site? Well, in our area, you can't rent those things. You can't rent anything. We're, we brought in real dinnerware because you physically couldn't get real dinnerware. You had plastic, foam, or paper plates. That was everything. As Carl, a, you're from a small town. <laughs> well, we are from a very small town. <laughs> so we brought in real dinnerware, and it shocked everyone. Wow. Uh, we, we did a chamber event for a client of ours. Uh, we did the social stuff, and we were doing their corporate stuff. We showed up with real dinnerware, and everybody just, like, they walk up to the table, and they just kind of blink. Like, what's going on here? But what is this? It was like, this is what should be expected, not surprised by. And, and so now we have real dinnerware. Well, we can't rent hot boxes. We couldn't rent propane ovens. We couldn't rent stoves. And we could rent fryers, but that was it. And we don't fry anything because that's not the kind of caterer that we are. So we've had to purchase these things over the last nine years. And become our own rental agency so to speak in-house we can't there's no option for us i've had to become a registered importer with the u.s federal government because we can't ship things to this part of north dakota inexpensively it's just ridiculous to get anything here so i remember i shipped two or three carts from tennessee to here and it cost me a grand just to ship carts i'm like well we're not doing that again and for the same thousand dollars i can ship something from shanghai Wow. And I can get twice the product. You know, you have to take some caveat with it. And it takes a a bit of guts to do stuff like that. But we had to do that in some cases just to to serve our market better. Right. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you have to take risk or you're never going to grow. You're just going to stay where you're at like everybody else. Right. And and then how do you stay out? Well, in the risk, there's a lot of risk to how I've built this business and the yeah, business talk was, about that. the idea originally was to this was the business was we were going to be fully in-house doing everything else the risk to that is that your florists suddenly don't want to re- refer to you because now you're doing florals your decor people are no longer referring to you because now you're doing full decor or doing more than them and so you run the risk of alienating the source of clients Fortunately, most of ours have been word of mouth and we didn't have a lot of referral going back and forth. We had some from the florist, but not a whole lot. So we dried that market completely up. We have no referrals coming in other than DJs. And and that one is an interesting story. We almost brought DJing in-house because the DJs were just substandard. We got in front of them and said, either you change or or you see us enter. And a year later, they all changed. They all upped their game. They began dressing like professionals and not like they were moving company, you know, people. And things have gotten better. We've got some very talented DJs now, and I don't have to do it, which is fantastic because I got enough to do. Yeah. But would you say that, like you said, it to me, that all comes down to communication. And if you're communicating to them, like, hey, we want to work together as a team. And not that the other vendors like florists and things like that, but I mean, I've been there going into 16 years now, you know, there's a lot of vendors that I used to work with and a lot of vendors that I used to refer, but there's also new people and new companies and new products and new chairs and the trends change. And if you don't keep up, then those of us who are continuously looking for the next best thing for our clients, we're eventually going to move on. It doesn't mean that we don't like you or you did something wrong. And even though it's like we've communicated to those people, if you don't take action, we're going to take action to better our clients. Like I just had one of my girls at a networking event (laughs) this past week. And it's hilarious what people say when I'm not around. (laughs) And um, this one girl was like, well, I used to work with Angela all the time with this one florist, but something must have happened. Like all of a sudden, like we just don't work together anymore. And so of course my team member comes back and she's like, yeah, I met this girl and she said that and she's like, you know, I just don't know what happened. And I said, nothing happened. It's just, I communicated to the owner that, you know, I'm ready to do 
out of the box things. And like my clients are not demanding, but the way that Pinterest has changed our industry, it's just Mm -hmm. different. And if you don't grow with what the clients are asking for, and if you don't practice, and if you don't do it well, then how am I going to grow as a planner and a designer? So of course, you're going to go find someone else if you're not willing to step up to the plate. I'm like, nothing happened. They just weren't willing to change. And I'm I, I'm surpassed that now. Like I'm thinking internationally, not locally anymore. And so surrounding yourself with people that think that way, it does a better for your business in the long run. So not like you're alienating people. It's just your goals and their goals are not in alignment. And there's nothing wrong with that. But people take it very personally and negatively. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, shit, it's just business. This is, is. about opportunity and making a living. And that that's all it comes down to. And then of course, you know, people get mad and they make shit up. And I'm just like, oh my God, <laughs> nothing happened. Like there is no yeah. bad. Story. Anyway, yeah. one on. of our our, <laughs> our local tent vendor who who does uh, just tents. Uh, there's actually two of them. Uh, one the one has a smaller size pole tent, and the one has the larger pole tents, the same size as our clear span. And I went to both of them, and I said, "Look, the one the the major player, he or they, it's a nonprofit." I said, "Look, you guys, you, you quit delivering to locations 50 miles outside of town. Every one of my clients is 70 miles out." I said, I don't have anybody that's within 50 miles. That's crazy. So can we, can I pay you guys for it? And like, well, it's all volunteers. They don't want to drive that far. So then I looked at the other folks and I'm like, tents are too small. Are you going to get bigger ones? They're like, no, this, this is, we're going to turn and burn this one for a while. Like, all right. So I went back to the main guys. I said, look, what if I take your tents and set them up myself? And like, well, that's fine. I said, okay, here's my new scenario. I said, I need to set this up in an area attached to a building and I need to be able to, you know, stake it down. I can't stake through the asphalt uh, back parking lot. The wedding is half in the building, half out in the back end of the parking lot. What can we do? Well, like, we don't have a tent that'll do that. So I went and bought a tent. There you so go. It. So I was, so when we got it, I went and I spoke to both of them. I said, look, here's what I've purchased. And I explained to her, I said, it's not like yours. I said, mine takes eight to 12 hours to put it up. Yours takes an hour and a half, two hours. I said, it's completely different. And it costs twice, the two times to three times more than what you guys are charging. I said, I'm not here to take your business, but I'm here to, to raise the market because I'm tired of people getting away for cheap when there's no reason for any of us to scrape for nickels and dimes when these things should be costing dollars. And yep. my rate is this. You should probably think about raising yours because you're under half of me. Mm-hmm. And immediately they paused and said, we're already too busy with our tent. I said, then raise your rates. You're not going to come close to me. You're already below half. So if you double, you're still less than me and you're making more money and more people will say no. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I said, you're a nonprofit. You'll make more money, not bring your volunteers up. And so that conversation turned into whenever they have a date that they can't do, they refer to me. That's and I amazing. refer to them when somebody says, well, that's outside of my budget. I'm like, well, you know, talk to these folks. They can, they can probably help you. It's not the same style tent. It's different to traditional pull tent. But if you're, you, you really need a tent, but you don't have it in your budget, call them, see if they're available. And we refer back and forth. And it was an honest conversation that did it. But That's the other awesome. They wouldn't even have the conversation. So <laughs> it was like, like ah, we're done. Okay, whatever. Yeah, it doesn't have to be about competition and about taking business away. Like there's so much business to go around. And, you know, it's like, you don't all do the same thing, which kind of leads me into my next question. Like, what would you say, which I feel like I already know some of this, but just to reiterate, like what is special and unique about your company and like what you guys provide? I mean, it sounds like you can custom and uniquely really do anything. And then I love it. I don't know about you, but I love it when clients are like, oh, I want this and this. And can I see pictures of things that you've done like that before? And it's like, oh, I've never done that before, but I'm super excited to do do it for you. So what would you say is like the most special, unique thing? Our, Our focus is making the process easy. It's really just about fully customizing it. We're not gonna cookie cutter anything. We're going to start from a blank slate and just go for it. And that's just how we're going to roll. We're going to, you know, our menu is generally set up so that anybody can look at it, but nobody goes by it. Everybody customizes the full menu. Same with a tent. You don't have to have a 40 by 120 foot tent. You can have a 40 by 32 in the front yard of your house because our tent can actually set up 
partially in the street, which has happened. We can do whatever needs to be done, and that's why clients like it. We streamline the entire process for them without making it complicated. It starts out with catering. That's our, that's our foot in the door, so to speak. And once we go there, we start having the conversation about other things. And that's when the, the, the heavens open and the angels sing. They're like, oh, my gosh, you mean I don't even have to leave this office and I can get most of my wedding done? Yes. But it and doesn't have to be cookie cutter just because no. it's in house. No, it's what do you want? I will ship that stuff in from wherever you would, wherever you want it. You needed something from Shanghai? Great. Let's do this. I'll, I'll do it. Cause I can't, we, we run by rule of never saying no, unless it's impossible. So far we haven't found impossible. That's amazing. I love your take on it. It's like, I don't know, again, I don't know about you, but when I get to like buy new things and do new things, it just it keeps everything fresh for like not only our companies, which it, you do have to take risk and it is scary sometimes. It's like, shit, I just wrote a big check. I hope more than one person likes this. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's like string lights, the, the small balls. We call them bistro string light, bistro uh-huh. light. Uh, Yeah. I have 2,000 feet of those things because it was oh. cheaper to order 2,000 feet of it from overseas and ship it here than it was to buy the exact same product with product code number from this side. Wow. I could buy 100 feet, the same price I could buy at that 2,000 feet. So why not? Plus I had 2,000 bulbs come with it. So That's amazing. Do like, I have 2,000 feet worth of, bul- of lights ever go out? Never. We might go to 300 <laughs> feet. I can yeah. cases of these things sitting there for the day that I have to string out a whole auditorium. Yep. And I will. And someday we will. And it's yep. just, it's there. That is amazing. Well, so what would you say, like, what's the number one thing that you think that your clients like absolutely just love? Just the convenience? It is the convenience. We are not cheap. So it's not price. (laughs) We are in catering. We're double of what our nearest competitor is. In the core, we're usually double of what our nearest competitor is. And uh, tents were double. Pretty much everything is double. Everything but florals. We're right on par with florals for whatever reason. But it's so a different clients, experience, isn't it? Yes, it is. And that's clients like it because we had this event in 2016 where two weeks out from the event, they call me and go, we have a problem. I'm like, what's the problem? We invited 300 people. So yeah, what's the final count? Because that's when it's due. And they're like, it's 400. And I went, what do you mean it's 400? So you invited 300. Like, we, we don't know. We, <laughs> we don't know what happened. The RSVs, RSVs came in. We have 400 people. I'm like, that's a problem because your room has a fire code limit of 325. Yeah. And so two weeks out, we negotiated to move because we was on the same complex, thankfully. We negotiated for a larger space in the building. We took care of calling everybody. or getting them moved over to the new space. We had all the design in-house. We had all the drapery, all of the florals, all the tables, all the linen. Everything was all in-house. She made one call and we shifted the whole wedding. In That's amazing. In one shot. Six weeks out before, she changed all her colors. So we oh changed all the colors. So it was all, you know, we could just roll with it. It's just easy to do because it's all in-house. You don't have to cha- call three people to change your florals and then your linens and then this. You just call one person and everything rolls. And that's what's led us to release full planning this year because we're doing this more and more and brides are starting to realize that the level of work that a, that a wedding takes, they just don't have time for that. Mm-hmm. Up here, there's been no planners, like none. Wow. None with education, none with experience. They've, you know, the old cliche, they've done one wedding or seen a wedding and then now they're wedding planners. Well, that drove us nuts because here I am 14 years later in the business and I am taking over these events. We have a hotel in town that when I walk in, the the hotel manager goes, whatever Carl wants, just listen. That's amazing. Because we take over. They will listen to me over the, their direct manager because we take over and that's how we've always done it because to preserve excellence, we had, we've had to. Nobody can skip on that if we're demanding it across the board on everyone. Yeah. I mean, so many people in this industry who don't or are not familiar with how we do things, um, but they've just like heard of us. Again, I've had a dollar for every time someone said to any of my team members, like, I don't understand. Like I've heard Angela is like a control freak and like hard to work with and da 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 da. I'm like, 
they're like, no, she's not. She just has a very, very high Mm -hmm. expectation. And if you can't meet those expectations, especially when she provides feedback to you and you don't implement the changes, we're going to move on. I mean, no hard feelings, but you have to become a control freak. And I've learned that the hard way over the years. And actually the funny thing is a planner, I don't want control. It is not, I don't need control (laughs) to feel fulfilled in my life. However, if a mommy doesn't do it, then who the hell is going to be in control? And so, you know, in my business life, it's like, yes, I'm a control freak. Yes, I have a certain level of expectation. And the older I get, the more intense it gets. And I'm like, nope, we're not doing that. Nope, we're not doing that. But I always explain to the potential client or the client sitting in front of me, I don't like the word no. I don't like to be told no. And my clients don't like to be told no. So I'll say, well, let me share a story with you. And here's why I would recommend this. So if you use that whole gestalt theory, which means you share experience. And again, since you've been doing this 10 plus years and I have too, people will listen and they actually start as they get to know you and work with you, they start to really respect you. You have to earn that. You can't come into this industry and say, well, you're going to do this and you're going to do that just because it's like, we know our shit because we've been doing it for a long time and we want the best outcome for the client. That's what our ultimate goal is, is to just make them happy. It's not about taking business away. And in fact, there's people, I mean, Nashville's a big, small, good old boy town, but it's like, (laughs) there's so many toxic people in the industry where it's just like, my God, I just want to create my positive fun hole and live in it. And mm-hmm. then get outside of the, the city for people who want to grow and who want to help each other and who want to collaborate. Because, I mean, I know you're in a small town right now, but look at how you have taken advantage of going outside. Like you said, most of your clients are 70 miles out. I mean, like, did you ever think that you would be working outside, you know, where you're located if you looked back 10 years ago? I mean, it's like, you don't know what you don't know. No, we when I started in the restaurant, it was the we did one event. It was the one of the last events that I did for that particular restaurant. And that was, we were an hour out, barely an hour out. I think it was 45 minutes out from home base. And we were set up in an old school, an old, you know, country school and Mm -hmm. full kitchen, commercial, everything. It was great. It was a nightmare because we were not, we were not equipped for this. It was so far outside of our comfort zone. I actually had to come back because I'd already transferred at that point. And the client was so desperate. Uh, several clients were. So I ended up coming back several times to do different weddings and do different events for, for clients because they, they just didn't trust anybody besides me yeah. to do it. So I was like, oh, well, I'll come back. So I, for about a half a year, I was back and forth every other weekend across the state doing different jobs. It, it worked out. Wow. But now we just, we just roll out and this is what we do. Got the final paperwork today. We signed contract with an event center two hours south of us. Oh, congratulations. So that's taking us way outside of home base. That's two hours yeah. away. Now we operate in the two hour zone easily, but this is a, a, one of the bigger ones regionally. It's very nice. It's very well run. The staff there are amazing and we're excited about it. But you don't see anybody else going, oh, let me go chase down leads in the capital city to two hours south of you. They're all like, let's just complain about that the market locally sucks and the local <laughs> market sucks. But Do something got, about it. <laughs> well, we got so dependent on oil money when the big boom happened in 2010 2000, through 2014 and everybody overspent and overbuilt and now everybody's struggling because the market has returned to normal. Wow. And we got hit because when oil companies who are paying $200,000 to Joe Blow to answer the phone suddenly don't hire anybody and everybody's laid off, wedding budgets suddenly take the nosedive. And so that's... We've had our recession. When everybody else had their recession, we didn't. We were busted at the seams. Gotcha. We've had our, we had a recession four years after, four or five years after everybody else. We've been through it. Everything's coming back. We're stable. But that has led me to figure out how to do things more efficiently and how to take care of our clients better so that they would come back. Yeah. I won't tell my brides, I never want to see you again. <laughs> in, in, in a gist that I don't ever want to do your wedding again. And they, and they know that. I'm like, this is a one-off. We, we do one wedding. That's just how it is. And, you know, we, we explain to them, you know, divorce rates and all that stuff we, it, and, and all fun and some semi-seriousness, but it's, we don't want to see again. But right. if you have a social party or a corporate party, you know, the higher end corporate parties like brand openings and stuff like that, we don't do your meetings and whatnot, but we'll do that. Think of yeah. us. We have, 
We have clients that are like that. They're, they started out as corporate. Now we're the social. They started as social. Now we're the corporate. And we, we just take care of our clients with excellence. And that's really what they like. They don't have to worry. That's awesome. It's fun. It's stress-free. We had a bride uh, or a bride's mom came in. She called November. We talked about pricing, about what it's going to be take to take over as planner. And she said, well, it's out of our budget. And lo and behold, she's called back. She says, I can't do this. Take this off my plate. I'm like, okay, here's, here's what we talked about. Here's the price of it again. And she was fine. I can't do this. I need somebody else, a third party to get these answers from people. Yeah. And we're taking over. We just walking in and saying, this is ours now. You will come to us. That's amazing. And obviously she already feels comfortable with you because you guys already talked about it, which is even better. <laughs> she, she didn't book with us, but she referred another wedding to us. And we booked that one too. And the same scenario, we are the planners. We are the designers. There's no food. We're not even catering this one. It's just uh, simple decor out in the field facing the horizon. And that's, that's what we're doing. We're planning that's and running awesome. everything the whole way. And it, it's unusual. I'm yeah. Thinking, so I mean, what would you say, like, you know, since you travel and pack up and I mean, what, it, what would you say, like from the business side in this industry, like what, I mean, I know you've had a lot of challenges along the way and you, you just take care of it. You're like, we're going to do this in house. We're going to do our own drapes and lights and you can't expand. We're going to expand. But what are some other challenges that you guys are facing currently with technology or anything like that? Technology is coming along. We're slowly getting paperless. I got to get my desk back. <laughs> like, I, if I could send you a picture right now, you'd probably cry. I, I would probably croak. But hey, you are in our inner circle technology program. And so you will be well on your way. <laughs> It's, it's bad. I'm looking at it right now. It's bad. It's so bad. But I haven't been in my office for like four days. So I just, I grab stuff and I grab the mail and throw it on a desk. And pretty soon I'm like, what a paper on this table. So uh, the biggest challenge for us is the seasonality. Oh. Those seasons are, but it gets 20 below around here. And it's crazy. <laughs> it's so cold. I mean, at 20 below, if it warms up 40 degrees, it's still 20 degrees. You That's sent me a cold. picture one time of the snow and I'm like, I wouldn't even know really like what to do. It has snowed a couple times in our weddings and I've had to call in buses to pick people up and pick stranded guests up and things like that. And it's like, you can't really prepare for those things in Nashville. You know, it's like when I do things in the Caribbean, like we plan for rain, we have a backup plan. I'm assuming you guys have plans in place since you're used to like yeah. that snow and the weather, but I don't know. It's you just like in. uncontrollable. You cannot control mother nature. <laughs> I've driven into so many blizzards. It's not even funny. I grew up on a farm. So when you had to feed the cattle, you just had to feed the cattle. You just couldn't stay in because it was cold. You right. Jump. And so that's built me for this. I, I had clients, a corporate client, we were taking care of their guys out on an oil site and, you know, not wedding related, but it was through that experience that allowed us to go fully off site to the point where we don't even have a full size kitchen anymore. We don't need it. We have a small prep space and we, we took everything on location, but it was through that experience that allowed us to go to where we are today. And I jumped yeah. straight into the, straight into the blizzard, knowing full well it was coming. And I got three quarters way there and I had to call the guys and say, I don't think I'm going to make it. And they're like, you sure? I'm like, pretty sure the snow is coming over my hood. Oh like, my gosh. Okay. Be safe. I'm like, yep. I can't see the town that I'm in. Like, so I'm guessing there's no curb here. I'm going to do a UE, but I need to go home before I get stuck. And when I turn around, I could fully see the snow was up to past the mirrors on my minivan on the side of the road. Oh my and gosh. I drove straight into it and it was, didn't think twice about having to do that. And our clients know very little will stop us. And that's, right. That's what they expect. We're not going to call it excuses. I mean, I, we've set tents up in downpours. Why? Because they need the tent tomorrow. In the yeah. sudden rainstorm, we can't do anything about that. We're just going to work wet. We had a wedding last August. It was a nightmare. It, the rain came out of nowhere. We were tracking it down to the minute. And where we were setting up, there was no cell service. There was no Wi-Fi, nothing. It was a hole in the ground, like physically a hole in the ground. Wow. And when we came out seven hours later from setup, Suddenly, everything updated, and we had rain on our way. And it not just rain, like straight down for hours rain. And our staff were soaked head to toe through and through for hours. Nobody complained. Nobody whined. 
Everybody did their job with a smile and our clients were happy. That's amazing. You just have to do it. This is the industry we live in and this is the industry that we've chosen and there's no backing down when you get into it. Right. I love it. Well, Carl, tell our listeners, where can they find out more about you, like on your website and social media? What's your most active channel? If somebody wants to book you or, I mean, it sounds like you'll go anywhere and do anything, which I love. We're, we're <laughs> where in the process of opening up the other side of the state. So we're we're, we're going to get the, the capital city opened up over the next year, eventually dabble in a little bit of travel agency type stuff. We'll see. Get that it's stabilized and fully opened up. And then we're going to be spreading to, we want to go statewide within a couple of years. So that'll be a big challenge and big, that's why technology is a big thing for us right now, because we have to have things in the cloud at all times. So everyone's on the same page because this nightmare can't go awry when you're in five different cities. So Yeah. Our most active channel is Facebook, and that was thanks to you. Do a, do a weekly Tuesday tips. In fact, after here, we'll be heading down to the tent to do it. Uh, instead of a Tuesday tips, we're doing a Wednesday quick live broadcast from the tent, showing it off in real time so people can see what it looks like. But usually every Tuesday, I'm online doing a, a short 15, 20-minute live broadcast about a topic in the industry, mostly for our brides so they can, if they are DIY, they at least have some professional input to keep the madness in control. And Instagram, we, we use that as well for taking photos of our events or day-to-day things. And then our website, which is going to be updated again here in the next couple of weeks. But hometownelegance.com is a website and at Hometown Elegance is our social handles on every platform. Awesome. Well, Carl, thank you so much for your time today. And I really enjoyed talking with you. And thank you so much to our listeners for tuning in to Weddings Unveiled. Have a great day. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with other wedding and event professionals. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to tune in next week for more tips on how to grow your business. And if you have a question or an unresolved issue that you want guidance on, connect with us on AngelaProfit.com. For more valuable resources, again, visit the website. And until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.